Hello VC, uh, it's a lovely sunny day for once and I'm here with uh, my latest vinyl update for you all. Uh, now, um, last Saturday I celebrated my 40th birthday and um, one of those who was in attendance was um, Ben Costello, aka Tom, from Limerick, who I'm sure you're all familiar with. He's been hitting the VC hard lately with a series of excellent um, uh, vinyl update videos. So um, uh, he gave me a couple of um, very nice uh, VCLT uh, presents for my 40th, so I'll be showing you them along with all the other stuff which I've uh, picked up lately. So I'll start off with, um, this was, <coughs> uh, we, we went out um, vinyl digging uh, the following uh, day and uh, this is one of, this is something that um, Ben spotted and uh, he knew that I'd I'd like this so he picked this up for me uh, as a 40th birthday present so um, this is an EP which came out with Sounds magazine in 1988 it's um, there's three discs in total EP one, two, and three. Now, um, some of the bands included here are um, the Pixies, the Mission, and um, Throwing Muses, and uh, Dinosaur Junior. So um, that's on EP one. On um, EP2, there's um, Living Colour and Screaming Green Messiahs, uh, a bit of metal in Queensryche and uh, Voivoid. And then on the third one, uh, another interesting mix um, Steve Earle, San Antonio Girl. Um, McCarthy, who were a they were an indie group in the eighties, they later morphed into Stereo Lab, and they have a, a song here called "Should the Bible Be Banned." And then on the bottom we have two Irish bands, um, A House. They were they were great acts. They were led by um, Dave Coase. Um, they um, yeah they released some um, some classic. Um, uh, songs in the late eighties, early nineties, including "Endless Art." That was their that was their most famous song. Um, the other group featured here are the Hot House Flowers. Um, wouldn't be the biggest fan of them. I can kind of give or take them, you know. Uh, they were kind of part of the raggle taggle thing. Um, okay, so um, thanks very much for that, uh, uh, Tom. Uh, that was a. Uh, uh, an excellent 40th uh, present. Um, now, <clears throat> while we were crate digging, Tom highly recommended that I pick up this. Uh, now this is um, Levitation by Hawkwind. And I think there's no better expert on Hawkwind than, um, than Ben. Um, so this is from 1980, one of their latter releases. Um, as you can see, oh, there's a Hawkwind, there's a big kind of a sci-fi uh, mysticism kind of a theme going on, and that's certainly the case with this cover. So, um, <coughs> uh, Dave Brock features on this one, so uh, kind of similar to um, Quark, Strangers and Charm, which I don't have on vinyl, but I have on download. Um, uh, this copy, particular copy, is probably not in the best condition, but it plays, it plays fine. So, um, yeah, this is a real stormer, levitation, the, the title track, um, who's going to win the war, so some fantastic, um, you know, guitar riffing, and, and uh, you know, it's a, it's, this is, a, yeah, it's a real, real rocking record, it's, it's on bronze, by the way. And it's a um, it's a German release. It's actually yeah, so West Germany, yeah. So there we go. Um, and uh, I picked up that at the 
the Mother Jones flea market and another pickup that I made was by uh, an artist who I've kind of vaguely kind of dipped into his stuff in the past but um, uh, this is um, Bonnie Prince Billy and this is called Master and Everyone uh, now he's his real name is um, Will Oldham he has recorded under that name and he's recorded under loads of different titles he's recorded under Palace Music um, uh, here as Bonnie Prince Billy um, he's recorded under various different um, variations on the Palace word I think Palace something else as well um, so his, his, his discography is kind of confusing a bit and he has released absolutely uh, over the last 20 or so years uh, an absolutely mind-boggling amount of records you know his discography is just um, endless but uh, this is um, this is from 2003 uh, so it's 10 years old so it's, uh, it's in very nice condition um, now I suppose the best way to describe him is kind of um, folk uh, kind of folk with a country um, influence uh, very very lo-fi um, it's, it's pretty much entirely acoustic um, see there now this um, insert there as well with this interesting um, painting which I think is probably uh, it doesn't actually say but I think it's probably done by Will Dolden himself um, So um, yeah, so released on Palace Records. So yeah, um, that's probably, the, probably a little bit too low-fi for, for my taste, but um, I can still appreciate you know his, um, his songwriting prowess and um, you know uh, he is uh, like a very interesting figure in, in kind of you know the contemporary musical landscape you know he's, he's just kind of doing his own thing really and uh, and regardless of um, regardless of you know current tastes uh, very nice artwork as well uh, uh, on the back there and um, now another pickup that I made um, last week was um, this is Talking Heads and our final album, Naked, uh, featuring our Simeon friend on the cover there. Uh, so this is an album which I listened to years ago on CD and uh, so I, I grabbed this minute that, uh, that I saw it. Um, so um, yeah, so it's kind of um, kind of an up album it's kind of it covers kind of slightly similar ground to um, to remain in light so, you know there's a kind of a bit of a kind of world music kind of a thing going on a lot of kind of kind of um, you know uh, funky beats you know um, I haven't yet played this um, this particular this particular vinyl but um, We'll certainly get round to it probably today. So that's yeah. So that's on EMI, and uh, yeah, it's, it's in really nice condition. So I'd say it should uh, should play f fine. I think. Okay, so there we go. I must say that I haven't actually picked up any um, Talking Heads on vinyl prior to this, so. Um, Now, um, now the next record I have is by a group that I featured in my previous long um, uh, vinyl update, and not including the one that I put up yesterday, which was a short one. Um, this is by this is Throbbing Gristle, and this is Twenty uh, Jazz Funk Greats. Uh, now, uh, I. Can I just mention um, 
Jack Stiles, who has an excellent um, video up featuring um, his collection of um, Throbbing Gristle, uh, plus generally industrial um, uh, related music as well. And um, uh, I'd recommend, recommend anyone to, to check that out. Uh, so this I got on Discogs and it, <coughs> it's an original um, industrial records pressing and um, it also features you know, there's something like um, the first 2,000 copies of this um, came with a black and white um, poster and that is the case with this one, I'll just show it to you there now So, yeah, so that was quite a bonus. Um, now, the, the seller uh, did say, did state that the, he had it pinned to his wall for years, so there's little pinholes in the corners. But um, I must say that um, he does, it, the description of it on the Discogs ad was as good plus, but really I think it's, it's, a, it's very much a, a strong VG. Uh, I think the seller um, undergraded it, if anything, because it plays plays very well. Uh, there's barely any crackle or, or surface noise. Now this um, this album is probably their most kind of um, accessible uh, record. Um, uh, like this, some like some of the songs in it, um, "Hot on the Heels of Love." could almost be like you know chart material you know you could easily picture it them being played and you know picture that one being played at a club like on, on like a lot of you know typical throwing gristle tracks um so uh and as as jack stowes pointed out this is this was their first full um studio album as prior to that all their other recordings were done live so um uh, may I point out the cover? Um, that cover is kind of like um, it's like a kind of a parody of the you know kind of cheesy nineteen sixties kind of lounge music, I suppose. And uh, it um, that location is um, it's Beachy Head, which apparently is uh, one of the world's top suicide spots. So we'll. Uh, um, so it was like a kind of a dark kind of in joke, I suppose, on the on the part of the band to choose that location. Um, now, as I said, as I stated in my previous video, Trub and Gristle were a group that I took a bit of while. Uh, it took me a while to kind of get into them because I was a bit wary of you know uh, they have this uh, um, reputation for kind of you know flirting with very. Um, disturbing and kind of controversial imagery and themes but um, <clears throat> you know uh, it's um, uh, you you know they I mean, they certainly do like but um, I mean, they, they kind of they do explore the you know the dark side of human nature and I suppose you know um, uh, in, in a very kind of a head-on way I suppose and uh, their music isn't for everybody. Uh, it is certainly, you know, not that accessible. But, um, but saying that, this this particular album is probably is definitely their most accessible album. Uh, now, um, uh, Ben also, um, uh, we, we were um, as well as crate digging. We went um, looking in a few bookshops and. I spotted this. Um, this is um, it's called Modulations, and it's uh, a history of electronic music, a uh, second-hand book. It um, dates from the year two thousand, and it, um, uh, it covers um, well. There's this different. There's a host of different writers in it. And it covers, you know, electronic music basically from from the start, you know, you know, like Stockhausen, uh, you know, 
um, music concrete then it goes on to kraut rock uh, through to post punk disco hip hop house techno and there's some there's some interesting interviews in here um, including uh, let me just find it again now da -da. There is a, okay, there is an interview with um, Can. Uh, also, yeah, there we go. Uh, Holger Zuke and uh, Erman Schmidt of Can. Um, with Tony Macao, who was involved with um, um, Miles Davis. Uh, also features Sun Ra. And, okay, I was looking for this. Uh, speaking of, just while we're on the subject of um, Drubbing Gristle, there's an interview with um, Genesis P. Orridge um, of Throbbing Gristle. Uh, so, uh, yeah, a uh, very, very interesting book. I've only kind of dipped into it so far. I've only read a few bits and pieces, but it is uh, really a kind of a book, you know, great for dipping into. And, um, uh, oh yeah, and Tom insisted on, um, on getting it for me. So, again, uh, thank you very much for that, Tom. So, <laughs> I appreciate that. And, um, okay, so that's, for, that's all for now. And I uh, hope you've enjoyed uh, watching. So um, uh, have a good weekend, everybody, and uh, tune in next time.